Mr Speaker, my question is to the Acting Prime Minister. Does he stand by all his government's statements and actions? Uh, in the context in which they were made and within the facts known at the time, most definitely yes. Supplementary question. Does he agree with the Prime Minister that he's not hung up on the use of the name Kyanga Ora, or does he agree with the National New Zealand First Coalition Agreement that says, quote, all public service departments have their primary name in English except for those specifically related to Māori? Uh, on this side of the House, we don't have hang-ups. That's number one. <laughs> the second thing is we admit the majesty of the Māori in any other language, and it's intellectual muscle builder for a young person, and we've encouraged it from the time we arrived in Parliament, some of us. But that said, uh, community housing or housing the community has become not that, it's become some woke, virtually signaling thing where people don't get housed and where housing uh, displacement or people waiting for houses went up by a massive 33 per cent. So we want delivery on policy, not virtue signaling any longer. Oh, supplementary. Does he agree with Chris Bishop? That Kainga Ora is known as Kainga Ora Homes and Communities. I don't know a single person who calls it Homes and Communities. And is that within the spirit of the National New Zealand First Coalition Agreement that all public service departments have their primary name in English, except for those specifically related to Māori? Well, Mr Bishop was saying something terribly honest, and everybody understands it, and everybody uh, can sympathise with it, because the essence of all communications is understanding and comprehension, excepting over there. They'd rather virtue signalling so that most people don't know. And I can tell you now that when it comes to Waka Kotahi or Kangaroo for that matter, people are concerned about getting a safe, affordable house. They want to get, they want to get roads that are tar sealed and the potholes are fixed up. Not some virtue signalling thing, which has certain people over there, people over there thinking that that's what people want for public policy. Ordinary, hard-working New Zealanders can expect something better. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Does he agree with Winston Peters, quote, the announcement today that New Zealanders will now have a direct pathway to citizenship in Australia is a monumental success that should be celebrated and congratulated? Or does he agree with David Seymour, quote, actually, we just got played by the Aussies. They've done a raid on New Zealand talent. Uh, I have to say that uh, I... Uh, <laughs> not by any sense of bias, but I prefer the first comment. <laughs> uh, because every now and again, even a fool can get it right. And Mr Hipkins went over there and spoke to Albo. <laughs> Mr. Hipkins, Mr Hipkins went over to there and saw Albo, and Albo saw the reasons of our complaint. And it arose yesterday when it, kept, it came out that someone who left this country at two years of age was sent back here as a 501. That's wrong. But in the big picture, Mr Seymour was right and he, when he said this, because he could have expected from two Labor ministers across the Tasman to have got so much more. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Does the government still intend to raise $170 million for its tax cuts by taxing offshore gambling, or does he agree with the 2023 New Zealand First Manifesto that that's just not credible? On the budget. On the budget. <laughs> Uh, the, purpose, the purpose of good governance, and ministers over here understand that, is to ask good questions and keep on asking good questions to get the right answer. That manifesto was setting out some very good questions, and I'm still waiting the answer. And I admit the possibility. No, 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 no. Because we've been in business and know how business works, we don't act like that. Laugh and scoff and jeer. They couldn't run the school tuck shop. In our case, we ask good questions. And we're still waiting for the answer. Honourable Tamapot. Maungai Tsofari. In relation to Kaung Order, is the Acting Prime Minister aware that the number of families on the social housing waitlist went from 5,000 to over 25,000 under the recent Labor leadership? Yeah, well, uh, could I say to the Minister of, could I say to the Minister of Māori Affairs, I'm dreadfully saddened to have to no confirm that. But that is what happens, and it shows you the difference between a one Greens party that came in this country uh, way back in the 30s, and they started building houses because they had practical people in Parliament who'd know, who knew what poverty tasted and felt like coming out of the Depression. And yet this modern version has come in with virtu these virtue signalling policies and done the very worst for Māori, and they stand there and claim to be the paramount voice for Māori today. Uh, 
<laughs> supplementary question. Does he agree with that noted economic commentator Winston Peters that the national government's tax plan, quote, they're going to make all this money, but every frontline economist has said, hang on, you've got a hole of $500 million a year. That's a hole of $2.1 billion over four years. How can you pay for your tax cuts? The marvellous thing about uh, consultative, poli con consultative politics is that you learn things, and when you've had that discussion, you find a solution, and the Minister of Finance has already found it. Was that smoking? No. no. Oh, now, if he wants to talk about... Now, see, he wants to talk about smoking. If he wants to talk about smoking and the Māori voice, they have taken for Māori and Pacifica in, in the last 12 years. Listen up. Listen. Ah, oh, no, no. Can I just say... Can I, can I just say... I know what my... Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't tell me about my... Here we are. I started it. The Ngāri Wai... The Ngāri Wai Land Retention Committee... The, land, the Ngāri Wai Land Retention Committee... The, listen up, you. The Ngāti Wai Land Retention Committee was started by a guy called Winston Peters in 74, 75. Right here, right now, you're looking at the founders. So don't preach to me about that. Now, if you want to talk about Māori and smoking, no, no, I know that you've got no familiarity with the Marae, but shouting won't help you. I've got the microphone and I've got plenty of patience, OK? Oh, well, you, you, may, you may not think you're finished, but I do. And, um, and I don't mean that in terms of your career. No, no. Well, point of order. With respect, Mr Speaker, they were saying something across, and everybody's entitled to inter interject now and again, but a screaming, volatile mess like we heard over there is not what Parliament looks like. I respect their right to interject. I think it's exciting and it makes exhilarating these debates. But that sort of clownish cacophony of behaviour yeah. doesn't you. work. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Supplementary, the Right Honourable Chris Hipkins. Does the Acting Prime Minister agree with Winston Peters? Quote, sadly, the spokesperson for the National Party said, if I don't give you a tax cut, I'm going to resign. Wow, could be a chance to have a decent Minister of Finance with a bit of experience. <laughs> Uh, but the minister, the, but the member of parliament and now finance minister said that is giving us a tax cut. Get used to it. 